Okay, thank you for being here. Welcome Thanks and congratulations much. on a terrific show. Oh, thank you, thank you. So, Bianca, I want to start with you. How has sponsorship helped you in your career? Ah, very good question. How has it helped me in my career? I think the first sponsor in my life, and that's true probably for many girls, was her father, who, you know, with a sense of, of humor, love, and support, brought me up through my childhood and conveyed me with a sense that there weren't any glass ceilings. He had only daughters, and I say only because he was the only man <laughs> in the family, and um, learned to deal with women in a very, very passionate way, I would say. Uh, for me, the main thing was really to come out of my childhood thinking I could do anything and there weren't any barriers. Wow. However, that said is I grew up in Europe. I was sent through education, university. So I was very privileged, I was very lucky to grow up in that environment with that backdrop. And I very much understand that many women around the world do not live on that turf, on that soil, essentially, that will help them strive in that way and will help remove barriers for them in that same way. Have you had sponsors um, specifically in your life who, uh, or someone who it, it may not have used that name, right, that word, but have you had, when you got, when you evolved your career, did you have people who recommended you for assignments, recommended you for jobs, recommended you for um, opportunities that then, how, how did that work out? How did that happen? Yeah, as a, many, many times I would say, um, because I don't shy away from having a conversation with people. So when I was interested in something, I would go up to someone, whether that was a friend or someone in industry, and ask them for their advice and ask them for, you know, actually really just a chat about that industry sector that they were working in. And most amazingly, um, actually most of my first jobs came out of those conversations. So I wasn't even applying for a job specifically, I was just having a conversation. And then people thought actually let's give her a chance. Okay, did you hear that? What advice do you have for me? is a phenomenal question, okay? Even if you're, if it's somebody who you, a company you wanna work for, you can just say, you know, what should I know? Here's what I'm trying to do, what do you suggest, right? And I love that, and they, they offered you a job by virtue of the conversation. This is how it started, yeah. Boy, that's a great takeaway, okay, good. Santiago. I hope you're breathing a little easier now that we're almost, we're almost through the conference. We're halfway. You're halfway, yeah. So you have, from my experience, a tremendous female team. Um, your wife, obviously, Rosemary Lecote, uh, Matilda Garance, um, Marie Amélie, those are the women that I've gotten to know. What do you think, how did you find these women? What do you think is the best way for women to connect with men who, who are supportive of women's careers? Well, um, the thing is that at Change Now we don't really make any difference. You know? um, it's just that it happens that the best talent we find are women. Yes, we like that. So, so we don't make any difference, uh, men or women. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I applaud your applause, yes. The best talent is women. And and you can see everywhere here is that, for example, um, here, if you look at our content, we are uh, with a good parity, you know? And without really um, making efforts, is that in the field of those who are really doing things, you find a lot of women with great talent, doing great innovations, great solutions, great actions. So for us, it's pretty easy to find the right people here. And then that's true is that sometimes, that's not the case when we go up the ladder uh, in governance level, etc. Uh, so this is something we'll need to change. But on our side, change now, as we don't make any difference, we see this equality appear pretty easily. So what do you mean as you go up the chain, it's, more, it's harder? What do you explain that? Well, um, I think that uh, Bianca will be much uh, precise on the numbers and everything. But for example, if you look at the change makers level, we have a lot of women change makers. 
And we have um, a program during the year, which is the uh, Women for Change program, where we give visibility to these change makers and we uh, give them um, acknowledgement of also for what they are doing. But then if you go, for example, in, the, uh, in a COP, uh, there is clearly um, an inequality in the numbers of women representatives. And this is how I leave it here because I'm not knowing the real numbers as you do, but this is a fact that is pretty easy to, to see. Okay. Um, Bianca, navigating a sponsorship relationship can be tricky. So it's not asking for a recommendation. It's not asking for a reference for a job. Like I've applied for a job and they want a reference. Will you, you know, that's, being a sponsor is a, is more of a long-term relationship, right? It's, it requires, as I said this more earlier, trust and getting to know someone. So how do you, how do you navigate that? How do you start to build that? I mean, what do you say? Um, what do you, when you've built these relationships, yes, you have asked for advice, but then, then what? How do you, how do you build that relationship? How do you, do you stay in touch on a regular basis? Do you, is it structured? How does that work? I think as human beings, we are, we are ultimately relational and not, and shouldn't be transactional, but I think the society we live in, it has become very transactional. And, um, and particularly in response to the climate emergency that we're in now, we have to be sometimes, I'd say, more transactional that we, than we want to be when we know that we have to build up relationships. And I think, as Santiago says, we don't want to really look at someone as, as you know, that's a man, that's a woman. We want to look at them as that is a human being and therefore plays an important part in building a sustainable future, a positive future for all generations that are to come and that have to play an important role in being leaders in this transition. Now the problem is that women are horrendously absent in this transition making process. So we know that all our operating systems are unsustainable. Our energy system, our finance system, our transport system, our fashion system. They are not fit for purpose with 8 billion people on this planet. What we have to do is we have to develop many more leaders, and that means many more of us here in the room have to become sponsors and have to double up their efforts. And I know we're all exhausted already because many of the people here are already converted to the fact that we need to act right now. But what we're trying to do is shine a light on those that still sit in obscurity, although they really have leadership potential. And those people are often women. We talked about the lack of VC funding for women earlier. The number I normally work with is two to three percent. And sadly, that number has gone down to 1.9 percent, as you mentioned earlier. Now, if we're only investing into 90 if we're not investing into the full human potential, into the full 100% of humanity's ideas, vision, perspective, we're not going to make it. So what does that mean for sponsors? What does that mean for our relationships? We've got to develop relationships with men and women. We have to break out of that, that mindset that has, has been created over 10,000 years of what we call a patriarchal thinking and patriarchal system to a mindset that is inclusive and supports women in all their diversity. And we need the chemistry that happens between different minds, right? The alchemy. Um, just to pull on one thing that you tie a couple things together that you said, when we're sponsoring women, when we're recommending women for a job, uh, or looking for somebody for a job, suggest someone who is actively working to address climate change, no matter what the job is. They can be a finance person, but choose and rec to recommend someone who is also addressing, who feels passionately about addressing the climate crisis and doing it in a sustainable way. I mean, now we have the, the regulations that require, ca you know, the enumeration and the reporting of all these statistics. And so somebody in fine, you need somebody who's in finance to someone who knows how to count carbon emissions or what have you, right? So we can tie them together. This is a, this is a session on, on climate, and she changes climate. We, we need that, that intersection, absolutely. Um, 
Santiago, I'd like your thoughts on what I asked the other gentleman in on this because it's it is trickier for men today to sponsor women and to mentor women because of the the sensitivities. So, how do you suggest that a man go about sponsoring a woman today? And how do you go about how do you suggest a woman go about asking a man to be their supporter in that way? Because it does require trust and a level of intimacy that we have to navigate today. Um, great question. Um, now, definitely, the thing is that you can see people, and as you said, they can be either a man or a woman. Uh, what I see is the talent and the soul behind the person. Okay. So when you start with this uh, uh, footage of equality, that's very easy to have um, a profound conversation also. Okay. And if I take uh, on my side, you know, um, I, I, did, I wouldn't have made an MBA if someone didn't give me a little nudge, for example. And so just nudging already is huge, can have a huge impact. And so um, this is my approach for me is that um, when I see talent, I try to nudge, I try to support, to give opportunities. And that doesn't really need to be asked somewhere. It's that, that you, you encourage, you acknowledge the fact that this person has a great quality, and that she can do something. You make her believe that she can really can do something with it. You know? And this it just comes with those little things, I think. You don't have to elaborate a big plan of sponsoring someone. It's just by small touches and, and, and support. So you're building them up. It's, it's every conversation matters, right? Uh, I like to call them mini mentoring moments or mini sponsorship moments where you're um, maybe even casually in a conversation, you hear someone say that they're interested in XYZ job, tell them to apply for it. You can do this. You're qualified. Um, go for it, right? Yeah. And the thing is that this is not a relationship where, like I would say, uh, some teachers try to teach you something. Actually, when you are supporting someone who has got the talent, you are just need to pinpoint the direction she has to identify to express this talent that you saw, you know? Oh, I love that. You don't have nothing to learn to the person. Uh, you just have to, to say, look, this is wonderful. You're super strong there. This is your right. point and work on it. This is a strength of yours. Pursue it. You, yeah. Acknowledge the individual skills and expertise that you see and talents that yeah. you see. And we spend too much time looking at our, uh, where we are not good at and where you can become exceptional at something, it's when you work on your strengths. And so this is, I would say, the, the best way to, to nudge people. Go ahead, you look like you want to say something. Yeah, I think, yeah, as Anne said earlier, I think there's nothing wrong with us. We don't need fixing. There's something wrong with the system, and that's a problem that we as women have as such. You know, we are super talented, and we are rearing to go. And this is why I became one of the co co-founders of a movement, you know, it started as a campaign, but it's become a movement of women rising into leadership. And all we need, as you say, is that nudge to remind us of our power. So sometimes compare that to the elephant, they tie up baby elephants to a wooden post uh, to keep them in position and then they grow up and they don't realize once they've grown up that they can rip that post out of the earth without any problem. They are so used to being plugged to the ground. And this is exactly what we, as women, have experienced. And this is what we've got to do now, is rip that post out of the ground and just get going. And, and once you're going, you know, there's no stopping. So I see so many amazing women, champions for climate action, champions for solutions around the world. Around this conference. Exactly, around this conference. Very, very impressive, all of them. And there are many, many, many more waiting to be unleashed. And this is what we have to do now. Because what we see in the research is that countries with more female parliamentarians have better climate policy and policy implementation. But there are only 25% female parliamentarians and a fifth of ministers are only women. 
same is true for board levels. So only 16% of, of board members are women. And we see the companies that have these board members are more successful and they have better climate policy and policy implementation. Only seven out of 100 FTSE 100 CEOs are women. Only seven. What are we waiting for? We want to get better and we want to build a sustainable future. And I say we wouldn't ra sail around the world with one eye firmly patched up, particularly if you know that choppy waters lie ahead. Well, and the, the fact of the matter is that women make 85% of the consumer of the purchasing decisions in the world. And so if you're not having the end user, the buyer at the table in the management team to understand that perspective, how are you going to develop a product and a system that serves your, your market, right? It's a huge opportunity. So that is the opportunity in my in T my Tell us a little bit about She Changes Climate. So we set up, we had a wake up call moment um, for COP26, the international climate negotiations that were held in the UK, where the leadership team was announced as an all male lineup. There wasn't a single woman on that leadership team. I had been working in the environmental sector for over 10 years at the time. And I had such bad carbon tunnel vision that I needed a friend, a colleague of mine, to shake me up and say, listen, you know, we can't let that pass. This, is, this, this conference matters more than anything. It matters for our work. It'll affect all the policies further down the line. And it'll affect the future of our children. So what, do, what actually does She Changes Climate do? So we set up to just speak to the British government and make them amend their team. We thought they would do that within a week and we all go back to our other jobs. Uh, instead, they didn't amend the team and we had to carry on all the way to COP26. And what it does is advocate and campaign for women at the leadership table of COP, COP presidencies. So we want COP presidencies to be run and co-run by men and women together. So we're talking about co-leadership and 50-50 vision at the top of these climate negotiations that matter to all our future. Okay, so everybody in this room who cares about having women at the table in the climate discussion, check that out, okay? Because we need to support that kind of an effort. Santiago, you're supporting that kind of an effort. I mean, it's amazing. I was talking to someone earlier who, uh, who said they've noticed an uh, abundance of women uh, as here as um, we saw these amazing women pitching uh, entrepreneurs. I see many of them out here, women speakers. How do we persuade more men to refuse to be on all male panels? To refuse, to, to how do we persuade more men to produce events like this and at their own events insist on having more women? Because it's amazing to me how men don't do that. I mean, I still go to conferences where there's an all white male panel. I mean, many. And I'm like, who's, where does this come from? So how do we reach men? Help us. Um, well, w on many ways, actually, more and more people is aware of this uh, shift that we have to do. So on our side, we, we have just to communicate on it. And, and this is also a rule that the organizer has to, to make clear. That's it. So it comes also up to the organizer to do that. Okay. But I just wanted to bounce back on, on what you said. That um, I And yes, we totally support what, what you do and what does uh, She Changes Climate. Uh, because this is, this is, there, there is this vision where we think we can just solve the climate issue as a standalone issue. But the fact is that we have so many other issues to solve at the same time, and we can only solve climate if we solve also this, the, others ones, the other ones. Because on top of the climate, we need to solve the problem of biodiversity, we need to solve the problem of resources, and the problem of inclusion of the human factor, meaning that this transition needs to integrate everyone from north to south, from men and women, uh, indigenous voices, and all the minorities. And if we don't do that, we don't manage to really change things correctly. And when you, when you think like that, definitely we need to have this much more balanced presence of men and women uh, all, all along the way. So to close out, what you're saying is sponsorship is also recommending female speakers. It's recommending women 
to present at your conference. It's recommending women panelists for our conference. It's saying what is our repre representation at this event and asking for the numbers, asking for the data, and making sure that we have um, ethnic, racial, gender uh, parity as much as possible that represents the audience. And using whatever position you have. Sponsorship can be recommending a woman to be a speaker, right? Sponsorship is supporting She Changes Climate. Sponsorship takes many, many, many forms, OK? So thank you. Please join me in thanking Santiago and Bianca. And you have your homework, OK? You have your homework. I want to hear about your homework. <laughs>